goodbye to Samara. I don't know why we keep visiting these surf towns and expecting a good night's sleep, but it was extremely rolly in there. It's supposed to be one of the better anchorages because this island here knocks out some of the swell. Well, I can only imagine what the worst anchorages would be like. So we managed a couple of nights and time to move on. We have a big hop now, 45 miles. Uh, that's a big hop for us at the moment. We're back to day sailing, thankfully. And we are off into the entrance of the Gulf of Nicoya. Uh, hopefully we're going to get some better sleep in there because it's a lot better protected and it's away from the ocean swell. That's right. Last night I was being rolled round like puff pastry. Yeah, I think we are done with surf towns. Let's just find that nice calm anchorage with Palapaba right in front of our boat. I think that's the challenge for the next few weeks. Time to kill the engine. Captain budget conscious. Everything is on budget nowadays in Costa Rica. He's even looking how much liquor I put into the glasses, especially mine. <laughs> There's a severe control on this vessel, let me tell you that. Two thousand RPMs, four knots of wind. That's how it's going right now. And we were so ready. We were just about to get the spinnaker out when the wind dropped. Another thirty miles to go. Still motoring. Still two thousand RPM. Still no wind. It's been hours now. The water's glassy. Well, here goes attempt number five. Never give up hope. He woke me up with all this cell trimming and pulling. I was having a lovely afternoon nap. It's given us almost a knot. I don't think we can quite turn the engine off yet, but we're nearly there. First mate can go back to sleep for another half hour, I think. Thank you for your help. I was supervising. We've got about 20 knots of wind at about 40 degrees, so it's going to be quite a uh, boisterous sail. I'm prepared. I went down below. I've cleared everything. I'm expecting a massive healing. And we're sailing again. crazy you go from six hours of motoring to like 50 degree healing although I think I prefer the healing any day oh, it's lovely how flat the sea has become so I'll take that too We're on our final approach into the anchorage and it's just like we're in Hawaii. Sadly with the ocean swell and world-class surfing beaches as well. I think our dream has come true. So for the first time in Costa Rica, it feels that we are really deep into the tropics. Looks pretty special so far, but I'm not gonna comment until I've had a good night's sleep and a nice cup of coffee in the morning. So far, so good. Baby steps. Fun sponge. No excitement in his life, is there? I'm too tired to retaliate to that one. Well, this place is spectacular. I can't wait to go ashore and take a look around. Feels like we've just crossed the Pacific and arrived in a whole new country. Well, we're going to report back tomorrow morning whether we bounce through the night or not. But so far, so good. <laughs> Cheers. I'm not bouncing. Not in my age. Oh, that's strong. He just uses the coke for colour. We're rationing.
Oh my god, this anchorage is so calm. We haven't had this calm anchorage for like a month and a half. I'd, we've met other people and they warned us that we are not going to find this calm anchorage in Costa Rica again. So that's a bit worrying. Captain is not happy. It's going to be an exciting day for Bohemia's little tender today. We're taking her head to head against Boundless's monster Achilles. Both teams have an eight horsepower engine on board and two crew members. The specs on our dinghy require four horsepower maximum. Uh, so we've doubled up for extra speed. Uh, basically, we're a jet ski in the anchorage at this point. Just a sheet of plywood planing along. So gentlemen, start your engines and may the fastest dinghy win. First mate's been instructed to dress up in low drag for a change. <laughs> He's in his light crew right now. <laughs> the order did cause some confusion, I'll give him that. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm speechless, <laughs> again. When he stepped out of the companionway in his pearls, <laughs> just like, no, no. It was clear there was a bit of confusion in the captain's orders, but we put that all straight. And now we're all set for the race. I'm in my low drag outfit. <laughs> all light crap. I promise there's not going to be much of a drag. <laughs> <Test run. laughs> run. They're just teasing us now, doing a test run. Cheaters. <laughs> Hooligans. Got to go back and get some weight out. <laughs> it's too late to go and diet go now. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it's not very clean. <laughs> the fuel is a secret mix of tequila and oil. <laughs> all dinghies at start line, all dinghies at start line. <laughs> okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Defeat, technical break, technical break. Okay. Oh. Um, we think there's something not right with the tilting of the engine. Oh, no, no, it's the weight. Anyway, so can you take this? <laughs> <laughs> can you take that? And I'm just gently <laughs> gonna move <laughs> right here. There you go. Right. And, and all our problems are solved. Yes. yes. <laughs> Heavy cargo of floated. So so many ways. In every <laughs> and take good care of him, boys. Uh, uh. Oh, yes. See? Well, after all, it must be me then. <laughs> it's not him, it's me. Get away. Get away. Get away. Well, he is me. <laughs> but you know. Yeah. You get what you get. <laughs> We're going a lot slower now. <laughs> Why is he always me? Well, there's a bit of work to be done on our racing tactics, I think. Certainly on the preparation side. Uh, I blame it all on the big breakfast. Uh, Captain overfueled, schoolboy mistake. And we got a bilge for the water, which is a little bit embarrassing. On the positive note, this estuary is really cool. Uh, we're in the mangroves and there's lots of wildlife to see. We've had rays in the water, 
Oh, uh, we've had birds coming up to us. It feels like we're in tropical paradise. We're on the lookout for crocodiles at the moment and monkeys in the trees. Oh, and we had some brightly colored parrots flying overhead. What better way to drown our sorrows than find a nice restaurant for lunch and build up more weight in the dinghy? Apparently, I'm dragging him down. In life and on this vessel. I didn't say that. Fingers were pointed, but I didn't say that. This is the Costa Rica I've been dreaming of. This beach just keeps getting better and better. It's gorgeous. Okay, I think we found it. We found the Costa Rican paradise that we were searching for the last three weeks. This is absolutely stunning. Uh, the anchorage here is actually quite decent. So I'm sure we're gonna come back with our boat. Marvellous. Restaurant is opening at 12. Seven a.m. and we are leaving. It's never easy. This time we are leaving because we have run out of water and uh, this water here is a bit murky and we don't really want to clog up our water maker and the membrane. So just going to head into the sea and drift for a few hours. Water maker is on, on two pumps. We are making water like crazy. The water is beautiful and clear and blue. So that's fantastic to see. Um, after we made all this water, uh, we're gonna be heading to Isla Tortugas, which are only eight miles away. So um, I've got high expectations of those islas. It's supposed to be absolutely marvelous. So that's us sorted for the next three hours, drifting on the open sea. Two hours later, water maker's still running and we're still basically drifting. We got another, probably another two hours of this before both the tanks are full, realistically. And uh, then we'll put some more sail out and head over to our next destination, Isla Tortugas. I'm on the red tide watch. Been doing it for the last three hours. I think our luck has just run out with the red tide. Uh, we filled the front tank and most of the back tank, but we're going through bands of red tide now. Uh, it's coming on thick and fast. But this is definitely one of the hazards of boating around here. If you're relying on a water maker for your drinking water, then you have to be super careful under what conditions you run it. And the red tide really creeps up on you when you're sailing. And before you know it, your boat is just surrounded in it. I've never said this before, but it's a good job we had the first mate on watch. This is very bad. I hope it's not going to be on Isla Tortugas because otherwise we are done with swimming. And let me tell you, it's hot. It's not something you want to do to be stuck on a boat uh, in this heat and not being able to jump in. Ooh. Tortuga. Not the easiest of beach landings. It's not the tour that I booked myself on, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. We managed to get ashore one way or another. Literally, the dinghy is anchored about 200 meters away and we had to swim in. There's just really steep swell and we're not sure whether you can actually keep the dinghy on the beach or not. It's strong. Oh, salvation. I've been dreaming about this all day. <laughs>
Special thanks in this episode go to all of our patrons for putting the loco in our Coco Locos. Thank you so much, and here's to you all. Champagne for everyone. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, then please don't forget to tell YouTube all about it by commenting, liking, and sharing. See you next time.